it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1150, the slim frames, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The slim frame set is a decorator set, so it makes the frames and they fit perfectly four of them across the front of a slimline card, but of course you can use those for a variety of other projects and they work wonderfully on our pop-up dies. There are nine dies in the set, and it's the two main frame dies that have an optional stencil emboss feature on them. So to emboss a wafer-thin die, you would just need to look up on YouTube or with your machine's manufacturer to figure out what is the sandwich. So I'm using a Spellbinders Platinum 6. The rubber mat and the purple mat come with the machine, so I just follow the instructions for how to emboss a wafer-thin die using that machine. So that first step was just to emboss. So now I've got raised stitch marks on the rectangular frame, and then I'll have some raised dots on the oval frame. And again, that is optional. You don't have to do it, but if you like that look, you can do that embossing. Then what I'm going to do is just change out my machine to be a cutting sandwich, set the dies right into those grooves again, which is very easy to do, and then just run it back through to do the cutting. Okay, so now that oval frame has those little raised white dots around the interior oval. And then you do actually have the oval that came out of the middle, so that might be something that you layer for something else. Then on the rectangular frame, it has raised stitch marks around the interior rectangle. And once again, you have the rectangle that came out of the middle. You can choose to use the dies as stencils, either with embossing or without. And I am going to just use a white gel pen to stencil on the stitch marks onto the rectangular frame. Completely optional, but a fun look for some projects. If you don't want to use a pen, another option is to actually sponge ink down through the die. So still using it as a stencil, but this time with some sponged ink. Once again, completely optional, just showing ideas here. Anytime that you've used a die as a stencil with ink, it's a good idea to have a rag handy where you can wipe that die off right afterwards. Another idea would be to actually ink the frame itself, and then it'll get darker, of course, on the edges and on the embossed dots. The largest rectangle and the largest oval are the two that are sized to fit behind the opening of the frames. So there's one for the rectangular frame, and then there's one for the oval frame. There is not much overlap on the oval one, so you'll have to keep your glue really close to the edge on that one. Okay, so ahead of time, I already made two of these same frames and decorated them with our Gnome and Santa die set. And what I thought would be cute would be to have the gnomes peeking into the frame, so cut to the size of the stitched inner shape. So let me show you how I did that. Okay, I've cut and assembled two more gnomes, and I'll start with the oval one. What I want to do is put my gnome through the stitched oval die, so the next one down in the set, and I'm letting the right side of the gnome be over the die and the left side behind the die. So it's only going to cut the left side. Then I'm going to reverse that for the stitched rectangle die. So I've got the left side over the top of the die and it's the right side that's behind it. So it will only cut the right side. And then I just have to run those through my machine. Now what I have is a gnome where the right side corner basically matches perfectly with the stitched rectangular die so that when I glue it over the top of this white one then it just the stitch marks go all the way through the gnome and then I'll just go ahead and put my stitched rectangle with gnome attached into the middle of that rectangular frame and then it's the same assembly on the oval version so it's cut that left side of the oval into the gnome that will line up perfectly with the one that I've cut then I just have to glue that finished oval with gnome attached down in the middle of the oval frame so that would also look cute if instead of gnomes they were Santas or maybe one of our other animal die sets. I've cut the heart from the slim frame set for the gnome to hold, so then I just need to go in there and glue it into place. So three of the gnomes are holding the heart, but then I wanted to put a greeting in one of the gnomes' hands, so I chose the XOXO from our word set 9. I think these days sending a little love note in the mail to someone to say that you care about them is a great idea. We've come out with our crosshatch design, which has been very popular. It now comes in a long rectangle, which is perfect for slimline cards. 
So my card measures eight and a half by three and a half. It's top fold. So that means I started with eight and a half wide by seven inches tall and then scored it in the middle for folding. And then just for a little bit of extra texture and visual interest, I'm wrapping one of the oval frames with some baker's twine a few times and tying it in a knot. And then I found these sparkly beads in my stash and they reminded me a little bit of the polka dots in the paper. So I went ahead and put a bead on each end of the twine, just tying a knot so that it wouldn't fall off. Now you have to think about the bulk of the beads. You know, if you're mailing this card, you probably want to skip this step if you don't want to have that extra bit of bulk in the envelope. And then those four frames can just space out evenly across the front of the card. And my card front turned out so cute that I just didn't even want to compete with it for putting a pop-up inside. So I just made a simple little inside to the card with the same crosshatch long rectangle, the love you from the same word set. And then notice on the slim frames, you can actually put the frame behind the other rectangles for a different look. So you do have some flexibility in size with a slimline card because it just has to fit in a number 10 envelope for mailing. So you can go as high as like a four by nine. Here's an example of a four by nine slimline. In this case, I used the slim frames on the front to spell out my greeting Noel. And then each one of these flaps opens up to reveal our mini pops pop up, the four different mechanisms included in that. And you can see those slim frames used on three of them. This is actually the card that I make in the assembly video for the Mini Pops pop-up. So you'll find that on our website under the product page for Mini Pops pop-up. Okay, and I'll end this assembly video with just a couple ideas from our design team. Here's a slimline pop-up card by Kelly Booth. She's used the slim frames on the front of the card and then on our flip frame pop-up inside. Here's one by Frances Byrne. She's again used the slim frames on the front of the card. She's using the Catherine label pop-up inside. So you can see these slim frames are gonna work on all sorts of different pop-ups. And finally, I'll show you one by Karen Aiken. Once again, slim frames used on the front of the card and the inside, this time using the mini pops pop-up. The slim frames die set is available on our website, as well as a lot of your favorite local and online retailers. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.